Hi all, I'm Usman from Code Below. In this course, I will cover one of the best React workflow and flowchart library, React Flow. So in this course, we'll be building this particular workflow. So you can see that I have custom components for every node. So I have four types of different components, a payment initiated component, then country components with their particular currencies, and then payment providers like Stripe, Google Pay, etc. I can add different payment providers like PayPal, etc. And basically, I'm adding more nodes to the workflow. I can also add edges. I can delete edges. I can zoom out, zoom in. I can also move the node to any particular position and you could see that the edge moves along with the node. I can also drag this particular workflow to where I want. And by the end of this video, I'm pretty sure you will master React Flow. So let's get into it. Okay, so right now I've deleted everything and we'll basically build this workflow from scratch so that you can understand each concept. First of all, let's understand the concepts so that we can use those concepts to build workflows. So these rectangular things which are basically displaying some data on the ui are known as nodes you can see that there are little gray circles with each node these are called handles and these are basically used to connect to different nodes the line which is connecting two handles together or two nodes together is known as an edge so these are three edges these rectangular things are four nodes and every node has a gray circle that is called a handle okay so let's use these concepts to build a workflow okay so right now i have an empty component and i have a div with a height of 500 pixel and width of 500 pixel and a border of one pixel solid black the react flow component which is the core component which we'll be using to make the workflow should be inside a fixed height and width container otherwise you will see nothing now this component basically accepts two things it accepts a nodes prop and it also expects an edges prop so first of all i will pass dummy values to these nodes and edges and you'll see as i build the nodes and edges array and pass it in the react flow component as props those nodes and edges would be reflected on the ui okay so let's build the nodes so i'll say const nodes then let me give it a type of node from react flow and right now it will be an array let me pass nodes here so nodes have certain properties so first property is id that's mandatory and it has to be unique across all nodes let's give it an id of one so another required property is data i will have an empty object for it for now and then position so position is basically where it should be present in that particular ui so right now we have a box of 500 pixel and width 500 pixel so let's say i want it to be positioned at x0 y0 so now if i go here you can see that there is a node here and there are two handles here now this node doesn't contain any text so by default for the components which react flow has inside the data you have to pass a label so let's say i will call it node one so now you can see that there is a node here with the text node one great now let me copy this and let me add a new node so let me call it node two and its position can be 200 and then 200 so now if i go here you can see that there is another node added there are a lot of other properties as well which you can specify in node to basically customize the node behavior such as let's say i pass hidden true now you will see that the node one is not visible. In addition to that, there are lots of properties you can check out in the node API in the React Flow documentation and you can play around with them. Now let's build an array for edges. So similar to that, I will say const edges, give it a type of edge from React Flow. Let it be an empty array for now and I will pass edges here. Edges is equal to edges. Now you can see that there isn't anything present right here right now. So let's add an edge. So edge has also some required properties. So one is ID, let's call it one, two. You can call it whatever you want, but it has to be unique across all edges. Then source. So source is basically from where the edge will start. So I have to give an ID of a particular node. So here you can see that there are two nodes and they have an ID of one and two. Let's say I want the edge to originate from the node one. So I'll give it an ID of one and then target. So here I will give it an ID of two. So now you can see that there is an edge between the two nodes. Great. Now, just like I showed you an additional optional property hidden for nodes, there are lots of other properties for edge as well. For example, right now you can see that the edge is a static line. There is nothing going on. But if I want that it has an animation, then I can pass an animated property. I can set it to true. And now you can see that the edge looks more animated and more awesome now you can see that i have two nodes but there's a lot of empty space in the working area and i want that the workflow zooms in to whatever the components i have right now it doesn't show an empty space so i can do that using a fit view prop so here i can pass fit view and now if you go here now react flow has basically zoomed in to whatever was present in the ui and isn't displaying any empty space around 
Now in addition to this, Rectflow also has a lot of plugins which you can use to add some more functionality or customization to the Rectflow. So basically you can do that by passing in different components as children. So here I can pass different things. So one such add-on is the background. So I can pass it here and you will see that now the workflow has a slight different background of dots dots and looks slightly more beautiful. I have imported the background from Rectflow. Now there are other add-ons as well such as controls. So I can import it using Rectflow and you can see that now it has some controls here. So I can zoom out, I can zoom in, I can basically fit view. So if I have zoomed out, I want to fit view again, I can click on this button. In addition to that, there is another components mini map. So you can see that now there is a mini map here. So if I zoom in, you can see that whatever is being shown in the Rectflow right now, it is being shown inside this mini map as well so right now there are only two nodes but when there will be multiple nodes and you want to have a brief overview of the whole thing you can look at this mini map and see what the overall ui is and that's also a great feature for now i will remove the mini map because i don't want it now in the next step i will hook up state and using state i will be able to do different kinds of stuff like make edges move nodes around etc so let's do that Okay, so in order to hook up state, we'll use two hooks. So for nodes, I will use the hook, use nodes state, and then basically I'll pass in initial state. Let's rename it to initial nodes and rename the edges to initial edges because I will use it as initial state. So I'll pass the initial nodes here. Then here I will get nodes, set nodes, and then on nodes change similarly for the edges i will do the same thing but i will use the use edges state hook here i'll pass the edges and here i'll say edges set edges and then on edges change and basically these nodes and edges are going here in the deck flow component and here i will pass on node change is equal to on node change and on edges change, I will pass on edges change. Now you can see that I am able to move the nodes around. And basically whenever I move the node around, it changes the X, Y position of the node. So that is why previously I was unable to do that because it was a static array. But now I have used it. So now every time the node change, whenever I'm, you know, dragging or doing something, the on node stage function gets called and basically the node state gets updated. Okay, so now I've added another node, node three. If I try to connect it with another node, you can see that it doesn't connect. Why? Because I haven't added a function known as onConnect as a prop to the Rectflow component because it is responsible for adding edges. So let's add that. So here I'll say const onConnect is equal to use callback. And then let me import use callback. Let me pass it as a prop here. And basically this would give me a connection and i need to create an edge object from this connection so i will spread the connection then here i want that every connection i make it should be animated just like the initial connection and i also want to give it an id so i'll say edges dot length plus one you can use a uuid or date dot now whatever you want now for adding the edge to the state, I'll use the set edges function. Then here I will get previous edges. Now I will use an add edge function which I get from Jack Flow. Here I'll pass the new edge and here I'll pass the previous edges. Cool. Now if I try to make an edge, you will see that now the edge gets created. So this is the project I showed in the intro and there's a lot of stuff happening. I've got custom components for different node types. I've got custom edges which I can delete. I've got also a custom component through which I can add nodes. I can also delete nodes using this cross icon and you know i've got custom components for the handle as well now I've basically scrapped everything and i'll add the components which i want so right now i've shifted the initial nodes and initial edges to the workflow.constants file because now it would be a long array and i don't want to pollute that file with information which doesn't concern this file so i will add a node so id1 then position should be let's say x 100 y 100 and then I want to pass data. So I will say data amount 10. And you'll see that there is a difference. Previously, when I was passing data, I had to add a label property here inside the data. But since I'm using custom components, I can pass any data I want here. You know, it can be an object of arrays or whatever. 
and I will receive that in that particular node component. I can display it however I want. Also, in addition to that, I'll pass in an ID. So I'll say payment in it. Now, this type is essential because this type would be used to show that custom component because I have four types of components for nodes in this particular project. So that is why we'll have a different type for each so that Rectflow can know that, you know, this for this particular node, I have to show this component, etc. Now let's build the component for this particular node. Okay, so let's make a component. So I will say payment in it dot TSX. Then I would make a component here. I would get the prop. So I'll use the node props generic type and inside that I would pass the type of data which I'm expecting. So for this particular component, I am expecting that it would be an object with amount number. So I'll say amount number. So here I'm getting the data and this data would have amount. Now you can see that it is, you know, detecting the type and everything, which is great. So for now, let's show the amount so that we can see that it is using this custom component. In order to use a custom component, I have to basically make an object here so i'll say const node types is equal to payment in it so basically this is the type key i used here so payment in it and then basically here i have to pass that component so i'll say payment in it and then i have to pass these node types in this particular component so i'll say node types is equal to node types now let's build that component so I will build this component using Chakra UI. You can use normal HTML with CSS or Tailwind, whatever you want. That is the power of custom components. You can use anything you want. So I will replace the div with the box component Chakra UI gives us. Then let me remove this amount. Then this box would have a background white and then a border of one pixel solid a a one f f f. Inside it, I will add another box. Box is just basically a div with some custom props. I will add this background color here and then end up adding of one. And then here I will use the text component of Chakra UI. Font size should be small. Color would be white. And here I'll say payment initialized. You can see payment initialized is present here. Now let's add the remaining section. I will add another box with a padding of two. Here I will have a text component again. I will give it a font size of 2xl, then a color of blue dot 600. Inside that, I'll say dollar and then amount. Now we can see that the full component has been made and I have added a custom node. Now there's one thing missing. By default, if you have a node which Stackflow provides you, it has a handle, but you can see that this particular node doesn't have a handle. So we'll have to add a handle ourselves. Let's add that. So here I will add a handle. So I'll say handle import from that flow. Then I will have to pass some props. So let's give it a type. So I'll give it a type of source. So a type of source means that the edge can only initiate from this handle. It cannot end at this handle. So when you are making the edge, if you are making this edge from this particular handle, then it would work. But if you are making an edge from some other handle and you are ending it at this handle, then that edge won't be made because the type of this handle is source. If you want that it should end at this particular handle, then its type should be target. So you can have either source or target. Now another prop is position. So where should this particular handle be placed? So we will use the position enum we got from direct flow. And we can pass either bottom left, right, top. I will say it should be present in the right. So now you can see that there is a handle present here. Cool. Now I want to make the components for these payment countries. Okay, so let's add the object for the payment country. So first I will add the object for US. So I'll say ID should be two. Then data would be, I will add the data later. Then position should be X300, Y20. And its type should be payment country now for the data we'll have three things so first of all we'll have the currency so i'll say it will be dollar then the country would be united states and then country code it would be us similarly let me copy it currency would be pound country would be england and then country code would be gb and I'll change the Y position from 20 to 200. Now you can see that I have these two components here for payment country. Now let's add the component for payment country. Let me make a new file. So I'll say payment country dot TSX. So let me specify the types. So node props. Then inside it, I would have the currency. 
this would be a string then country would be a string and then country code would be a string as well and let me get the data from here so currency country country code let me add this component here so in node types i will say payment country should be payment country now you can see that i am displaying the custom component for payment country okay so i've displayed some markup here this is some basic styling so i'll add a box then inside this box i will use the component so jack country flag and then i'll pass in some props so the country code is the country code and then svg and then area label would be whatever the name of the country is so i'll pass that and then some styles so i'll say font size should be 2 em and then line height should be 2 em now you can see that i'm displaying the flag great now let's add the name and currency here so i'll say flex grow one inside it i will add a box and then text component from chakra here i'll display the country name and below it i will display the currency but i want its font size to be small so i'll say x small so you can see that now I'll display the payment country components as well similarly let's add the component for now i have to show two handles here so basically i want that from payment initialize i am able to connect with this payment country and then from payment country i am able to connect to payment provider so as you can see in this picture i want two nodes so one node would be on the left and that would have a type destination so that the edge could end there and then there would be another node on the right and that would be a source node so that the edge can start from here so let's add those handles i will copy the handle code from here and i'll paste it here so let me import position also let me import handle and add another one so it would be present on the left and it would have the type of target so now you can see that there are two nodes you can see that now i can make an edge from here to here cool now let's make the component for this payment provider okay so i've copy pasted the node information for the payment providers because it's a lot of repetition and don't want to make the object again and again it's similar the id is different obviously the type for all these is payment provider and we'll basically use that in the node types to display a custom component for these three nodes and then for the data i'm displaying name and code so i will display the name and inside the component i will have an object and using the code i will get the image url for that particular payment provider and i will display that so here i will create a payment provider file and make a component here i'll say node props inside node props i'll have the name which would be a string and then code which would be a string and let me extract the data here so name code let me add the node type here so i'll say payment provider payment provider okay so these components are being shown here great okay so for the payment provider code to image map i have basically search the different logos for apple google pay paypal and amazon the keys are the dummy codes which i have given to the payment providers and the values are those urls for those particular images and i will basically use this map to show the image okay so i've copied pasted with some markup again it's a flex container with align item center and some border and background styles and also some padding here i will have a box it will have a height 4, width 4. Inside it, I will have an image component. It would have a height 100%, width 100%. And the source would be payment provider image map. And then I'll pass the code here. Now you can see that I'm displaying the images for the particular payment providers. Great. Okay, below it, I will have a flex with a grow one so that the text name can take up the whole space inside it i will have a text component font size would be small i will add a minus two top margin and inside it i'll just show the name now you can see that these components are being shown here 
one additional thing in the picture you can see that i have a cross icon so i've added this ability for these payment providers that i am able to delete the node as well for the previous i haven't added the ability so let's add that logic okay so i've added an icon button here from chakra ua simple it's just you know an icon with the color and red and background transparent now i want to add the on click logic for it so basically if you want to get the setters for edges or nodes inside any custom component you can use the use react flow hook so i'll say const set nodes is equal to use react flow and now i am able to get the setter so here i will get the id for that particular node so using that id i will basically filter out the nodes so i'll say set nodes prev nodes prev nodes dot filter node node.id should not be equal to the id of this node now if i click on the cross icon for a particular node you can see that it goes away great now in addition to that i also want to add the ability that if i let's say delete the node i can add that node back also i can have other options for other payment providers so that i can add other nodes as well so let's add the logic for that so i'll call this component payment provider select dot tsx the rfc i want to use any props because i don't want really anything from the props okay so now i did a bunch of things so this is a dummy array of providers so stripe google pay and apple are already displayed on the ui but i've also added some other ones like paypal and amazon pay and you know dummy codes dummy names so i will basically map them here so i'll say payment providers dot map provider menu item component and then inside this menu item component i will display the provider name on the on click of this i will say it should call a function on provider click and then i'll pass the provider as a function let me make this function so i'll say cons on provider click is equal to it's a function it would receive an object with name string code string then here i'll get name and code here i'll get the set nodes setter from use react flow just like before so i'll say set nodes prev nodes i will return an array i'll spread the previous nodes here then i will have an object here with the id of prev nodes dot length plus one so that i have a unique id every time then in the data i will pass the name and code then here i will have a type of payment provider so that i can show that custom component now one thing is demanding positions so where do i want to show that node which i will add using this component i want that it should be shown in a random position so the working area for my workflow is 500 pixel by 500 pixel so i want that x and y should be in between 0 to 500 how can i achieve that i'll use math.random so i'll say const location is equal to math.random multiply by 500 and then here i'll say position should be location and then y should be location here i've added the node for the payment provider select i've assigned particular i've assigned some particular coordinates to it also the type would be payment provider select i don't want to pass any data to it so for the data i've just passed an empty object so i'll copy this key i will head over to workflow.tsx here i'll say payment provider select should be payment provider select now you can see that i'm also showing the add payment provider here cool now if i let's say click on paypal you can see that it gets added in a random position i can also add it let's say amazon pay and it gets added here i can place it here i can also remove different payment providers and add them again now you can see that if i add an edge now there is no way to remove it react flow doesn't provide a functionality for me to be able to remove that particular edge but i can make a custom edge and add a cross icon just like i showed here in this particular project and using that i can remove the edge so let's add a custom edge component so let's make a file custom edge.tsx then custom edge 
now first add the logic for showing the edge and then i can add the cross icon so for the edge i will use the bezier edge component then i'm getting some props here they are of type edge props i will just spread the props here in this bezier edge component let me add a type here so whenever i add a edge it has this custom edge type now here just like no types i will add edge types here and this would again be an object so custom edge should display the custom edge component let me import it and let me pass it as a prop to react flow component so for adding the cross icon i will import an edge label renderer then i will copy this bezier edge from here and i will paste it here now i'll add the delete icon inside this edge label renderer okay so i've added the icon button component here but you can see here that the icon button component is not being displayed here so i'll have to add some styling logic here for the icon button to show so basically i will absolutely position the icon button based on the position of the edge so for that i will have to extract some properties from the props so i'll say source x source y target x target y source position target position and basically now i will use the get bezier path function because i'm using a bezier edge and i'll add all of this stuff here and from bezier path i'll get something so edge path which i want to use and then label x and then label y using the label x and label y i will position this icon button so here i will use the transform css property so here i'll write translate minus 50 percent minus 50 percent and then here i'll say translate label x pixel label y pixel so now you can see that the cross icon is displayed here great now this cross icon is not clickable at the moment so in order to make it clickable i will also add another css property so i'll say pointer events is equal to all so now this button is clickable you can see now let's add the on click handler so similar thing as i did for the payment provider component i will use the const set edges function now from use direct flow and then i'll get the id from props here and here i'll say on click is equal to set edges i will get the prev edges then prev edges dot filter edge edge dot id should not be equal to the current edge id now if i click on this cross icon you can see that edge is gone great now i'm able to make edges and also remove edges great one thing I forgot, I forgot to add a handle here for payment provider. So let's add that. So let's copy the handle from here and paste it here. And this would be a target type. Let me import the handle. And I want to show it on the left. So left. Now you can see the handle is great. Okay, right now you can see that the handle is very small and it's difficult to click on it. So I will like to make a handle that is slightly big and also with some custom styling. So let's add the custom handle component. Okay, so I will say custom handle.tsx. Then here the name should be custom handle. Now it would get some props here and its type would be handle props. Here I will import the handle component and I will spread the props. Cool. But now I want to style it a bit. So I'll say style should be width should be 8 pixel. Height should be 8 pixel. Then background should be white. And the border should be 2 pixel solid black. So now let's add this custom handle first of all in the payment init component. Let's see. Now you can see that I am showing a custom handle in the payment init component. Now I don't have to add some handle types or something in the React flow component itself. I have just wrapped the original handle with my own handle component and I have added some styles. So you can see the custom handle in action also. Now it's easier to click on it. 
okay so now replace the handle component everywhere and now you can see that it's easier to click on it and it's easier to make edges and now you can now i have my own custom components now i can add edges delete edges i can add nodes etc great so this was the crash course for react flow if you have any further requests for any react related thing or web related thing or if you want a further detailed course about react flow please let me know down in the comments below as always like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video bye